All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Zheng Yang Yu. I am a first year graduate student at the University of Vermont. And I'm here to give a presentation on the Mott insulator to superfluid quantum phase transition for helium on strain graphene. And this work is supported by uh, this NASA grant, as well as a lot of help from my uh, from various other researchers at the University of Vermont, including Nathan Nichols, uh, Taras Lakoba, Larry Kotov, and Adrian Del Maestro. So an interesting problem in the uh, field of correlated system is whether or not there can be two-dimensional two superfluidity. And an interesting system in which this can occur is the first layer of helium absorbed onto graphene. And so what do we see when we first absorb helium onto graphene? So when we first start adding helium onto graphene, so if we look at the two figures on the right, when we first start increasing the chemical potential and adding helium to a layer of graphene, we first get into this phase here where we have one about a dense particle density of about one third. So that means one uh, helium for every three sites on the graphene lattice. And we can see that this happens for what we have on top is a soft core helium, uh, a soft core boson, and it stays in this phase for quite, for quite a while before it jumps into the next phase. And so what, it, what does it look, what does the uh, first layer of helium look like in this phase? And we can look to the left onto this figure of the particle density as, uh, as done by pre previous experiments with quantum Monte Carlo. And if we look, now look at the phase diagram of this system, we can see that uh, for a certain chemical potential, we have a solid one-third filling phase. And where do we see the superfluidity? We see it to the right of this one-third phase. When we increase the ratio of the hopping uh, amplitude to the nearest neighbor interaction, we could see this one solid one-third phase transition to a superfluid. And so the question we're interested in is, is there some sort of experimental measure thing that we can tune so that we can essentially make the, our helium uh, transition from this one third solid one third phase into a superfluid. And the way that we think we're gonna do this is via mechanical strain. And so how, how do we think that straining this, the graphene layer beneath the helium can actually induce this uh, transition? Well, we think maybe we can decrease the onsite interaction uh, or the nearest neighbor interaction, which means uh, the particles won't feel each other as much and can feel freer to move around. Or maybe we can even just straight up increase the hopping amplitude in certain directions, which just makes the particles eat, uh, move throughout the lattice easier. So what is the geometry of the problem? So what we're doing is we're taking heliums, helium atoms, which are on the center of uh, these hexagonal Gra gra graphene lattice, and we're straining the graphene lattice in the arm tree direction, which is means we're just essentially taking the uh, tips of two ends of the uh, hexagon and stretching it like that. And what we see when we add strain is that uh, the hexagons get longer, but they also get a little thinner as well. The uh, potential of the helium on this graphene and strain graphene is uh, parameterized below, but really what we're interested in is we have the plots on the left, which we can show you what actually happens. So with no strain on top, we can see that uh, we have essentially a uh, potential that's six-fold symmetric. However, when we start adding strain, we see that in the direction along the strain, the potential barrier seems to get higher, while in the direction perpendicular to the strain, the potential barrier seems to get lower. So we're thinking, okay, maybe if the potential barrier gets lower, perpendicular to the direction of strain, maybe that will make particles more likely to flow in that direction and have superfluidity. So how do we see these measures here? So what we are calculating the hopping, the nearest neighbor interaction, and the uh, on-site interaction is using the extended Bose-Hubber model. And we have here again, the T, which is the hopping parameter, which is essentially how likely a single a uh, helium atom on the lattice is likely to hop to the sites right next to it. And then we have the on-site interaction, which is the energy of two helium atoms sitting on the same site. But as we'll see, that's probably not gonna happen. And thirdly, we have V, 
which is the other important quantity for our in the phase diagram, which is how much two helium atoms sitting on sites right next to each other feel uh, each other and the energy of their interaction. So how do we compute these three quantities? So first of all, we do need some way to represent these uh, helium atoms. So what we are doing is we're pretty much solving the one body problem using block theorem, which assumes that the wave function is uh, a product of some running wave and a periodic component. And also once we are getting all these results, we're essentially rescaling everything by the uh, recoil energy here, uh, e, sub, e sub bar, which is h bar squared k squared, which is momentum over 2m. So when we first di diagonalize this, we see we get the uh, triangular lattice band structure. And this band structure is pretty fam familiar to us, and we can confirm it with results done before. And we can see the spaghetti di diagram here, which is what happens when we plot the band structure onto the uh, the first four bands onto the high high symmetry points. And an interesting thing we see is when we start strengthening and graphing, the band gap first actually increases slightly, but then starts decreasing. And um, the decrease we can explain by the fact that the entire potential well gets shallower with more strain. And the increase, uh, we're not exactly sure, but that's an interesting thing to look at. Now we have the block waves. However, what we have is essentially periodic solutions. They don't represent a single atom particularly well. So what we need for that is Vanier functions. So a Vanier functions is essentially a combination of all the different uh, block waves weighted with their momentum. And we can see here uh, on the left, essentially we arranged six block uh, Vanier functions uh, in the in the one third filling, and it looks very similar to the density plots we've seen before. And on the right, we can see a cut of the Vanier function first uh, along the direction of the strain to the nearest site and then perpendicular to the strain to the nearest site. And we can see when we start increasing strain that the Vanier function is less likely, to, or the essentially the atomic wave function is less likely to leak to the sites along the direction of strain and more likely to leak into the sites uh, perpendicular to the strain. And what, what's, the, what, what's the result of this? When we, start we can see that when we start calculating t. So uh, the way we're calculating t for mo most everything is essentially a direct integration with the Vanier function on, on one side, as well as the Vanier function on the side next to it with the Hamiltonian in between. But we actually have a way of, confir of confirming this result as well, which is for zero strain, the type binding model gives us a, a nice result, which is that the uh, uh, energy at the k point to the to the center of the lattice is 90. And we can confirm this. That means we can check our work and we, we, we have done so and it shows that we're in the right ballpark at least. So what do we see when we increase strain? Uh, first of all, at zero strain, we see that essentially the hopping to all the nearest sites are is the same, which makes sense because the potential, potential is the same. Uh, however, as we start increasing strain, what we see is that the hopping along the directions that we're straining is decreasing slightly and then sort of saturating or increasing slightly. But the uh, hopping perpendicular to the direction that we're straining is increasing by a lot. And by the time we get to something like 30% uh, strain, uh, we're seeing nearly 100% increase in the hopping ampl amplitude. And now this is a, and now we can look at the other two quantities. Uh, which we can also calculate via direct integration. We have the U, which is the on-site interaction, which just takes the Vanier function on the same site and calculates that with a helium-helium potential, uh, V in the middle. And we can see that it is something like 10 to the 60. And this really, what this really means is that we have pretty much hardcore bosons. And we can think, and, and why, why is that? Essentially, the lattice we have and the atoms we're trying to fit into that lattice are essentially on the same length scale. So there's pretty much no way we can fit two helium atom Onto a, into a box that is the size of one helium atom. Of course, as for the uh, nearest neighbor interaction, we can see it is also quite large. Um, so this does not seem like it would be very conducive to us getting out of the uh, one third filling phase into the superfluid phase. But so what are we seeing here? First of all, we can see that mechanical strain can increase the hopping amplitude of helium absorbed on graphene by as much as 100%. And this is great news, as um, if we 
start in the uh, solid phase is to, we have a great chance of getting out of it into the super, super fluid phase. Um, however, the nearest neighbor interaction is showing us that we're pretty deep into the, in the solid phase. And we have a good reason to believe that maybe our calculations of V and U may not be correct. And that is because we're using essentially one single atom uh, Vanier functions as, as representations of two, two atoms sitting right next to each other. And we would expect that they feel the, uh, the two atoms feel each other's wave function more. And maybe if we have better ways of calculating the uh, nearest neighbor interaction, we can see a, a lower value for that. And maybe we can see, actually see something that can show us a transition from uh, the one third solid into the superfluid. All right, thank you very much.